Okay, Les Paul, we, um, there's a, you know, right down was near... Was that 50, Fat Tuesday? Well, I, the first time I played with yeah. him was at Fat Tuesdays. Okay. It was like his last few gigs at Fat Tuesdays. All right. And, um, and his regular bass player went out on the road with, um, with Tal Farlow. Okay. So they were looking for a fill-in, somebody to fill in. And uh, I was playing down at the Ear Inn. We, we had like a steady gig down at the Ear Inn. Mm -hmm. um, when Tony Garnier like went out on the road with Dylan, I kind of okay. like slipped into his, he, you know, he had like a steady thing down at the Ear Inn. And uh, Lou Paolo, the guitar player right. with Les, uh, came down with Howard Levy. Like okay. some, somehow Howard Levy was there and, um, and Lou and we had like a really fun session at the ear and I said, hey, you know, you should like come down to Fat Tuesdays and, you know, you should meet Les and, you know, uh, you could fill in, you could sub, you know. So I went down and, you know, said hi and, um, and you know, Gary was going to be like leaving town for, mm -hmm. for, you know, a few weeks and, um, but I never ended up getting on stage, he would just like kind of get sidetracked, and uh, that place was so crowded. Yes, they they yes. just like kind of cram you in. They wouldn't even give me a seat. I had to like sit in the sound booth. <laughs> There's like this little tiny sound booth, and I sit in the sound booth. So they let me record um, the shows mm -hmm. because I didn't. I wasn't even like so aware of Les Paul. I knew he was. I knew it was. A, I knew it was a guitar. I didn't even know it was a person. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? You know. And yeah, I was, then I saw him, and I was like, wow. This, everything. Yeah, it's like this guy's like got some crazy energy. You know. So. Um, so it turns out, like, they said, okay, you know, Paul, you're going to be playing next week. But they said, oh, I forgot to get you up. It was, like, supposed to be some kind of audition. Uh -huh. But but they were just like, you're just going to come up and go in and play the... Baptism by play, fire. Yeah, so, you know, I had listened to the... You know, basically, he would do very similar sets. You know, right. he, had, he, has this, he has this set, you know, of, you know, 15 tunes or something. All his standards. You know, all the standards yeah. that he did for years. And they gave me this, like, list of, like, 80 tunes... And and my mom like knows all the mm -hmm. tunes. She knew every so like there was, a, there was a few that I didn't know, and so I would like check with my mom, and she you know, like miraculously give me like the fake book sheet. She would have it in one of her crazy <laughs> fake books. I was like, that's like you know having like a mom like mine. It was like well, you awesome. what a resource. It was, she was amazing, you know, <laughs> really incredible. And uh, so um, he was quite a character. What was he like on the bandstand or working? Um, I loved his lectures. He was. He, he 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 could really talk, yeah, yeah. nonstop. But it was it was um, you know we, I just got up and it went well, mm -hmm. and um, and so we did the we did that gig, and then like about a week later he got sick, mm -hmm. you know really sick, right. and um, so sick that he missed like three weeks in a row, okay. and Fat Tuesdays closed. Because he was kind of carrying it that one <laughs> night of the week, because the rest of the week it was kind of quiet over there, so they couldn't keep it up opened, and then nothing was going on, and then he uh, a few months later started feeling better, and um, the iridium, right? Then he went to the iridium. But there was about a there was yeah. about a year or so in between where he was like, "You want to come over to?" You know, he'd call me up. He says, "You want to come out to Mawa to the house?" And so me, him, and Lou. We just we'd plug into the old original console, yeah. <laughs> this amazing like the you know the the original um, fair uh, Fairlight it was not um, Fairchild, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the guy the original uh, maker made those Fairchild compressors yeah. and this amazing board had three giant knobs, and we each plug into one channel, and um, and instead of going to that giant eight track machine, it would right. go to a realistic cassette deck. You know? <laughs> and you plug in and it would be like kind of like and then all of a sudden the sound would like clear up and it was like the most amazing sound. Wow. So, you know, for about a year or so we you know be hanging out at Les's every week, you know, at least once or twice a week just playing just for fun, mm -hmm. you know, just because I was like getting this, wow, this guy's really cool, this you know. This is Les Paul. This is Les Paul and I was like really getting kind of, you know, a cool education. And um, and then you know one day he was like, Paul, next week we're starting at the Iridium. Wow. It was like we had no idea, you mm -hmm. know. And then we started. And I did, you know, that was pretty much the old Iridium was about four and a half years. You know, one of his tricks, I understand he would detune a guitar and then ask someone like a Jimmy Page or a Steve Miller to come up and they would get the and it would be awful.
Oh, well, he would always, you know, he was like a, very, a serious practical joker, you know. <laughs> Tell me one of his practical jokes you were in on. Well, I mean, I would not be in on them. Right, okay. No, like, he would do it all himself. I mean, um, you, know, occasion, you know, he had like a few, um, I mean, he was like a real jokester, and he had like a, he had a... A repertoire. A, a repertoire of things that he would do. <laughs> like, you know, it would either be like, while they're not looking like, you know, detune a string, you know, <laughs> if they're just like, you know, kind of, he would just like, just, they would be kind of close by, you know, and he'd get like Lou to, you know, you know, as soon as they look away, he'd be like, you know, everybody like, oh, you would laugh <laughs> or he'd be playing and then, you know, all of a sudden he'd like just pull their, if they started really being good, he'd just go over to their cable and he'd just pull it out. <laughs> 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 like to just directly, just like rip the cable out of the guitar, you know, right. you know, like they'd be playing, you know, it's, if, it got to, if it got too good, you'd, just yank it, you know? <laughs> and you're up there. You're an accessory to the crime. I mean, really. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, I was in like, you know, like, you, know you couldn't really, um, you couldn't... Um, Act like nothing's wrong. You, you couldn't, uh, <laughs> I mean, they would figure it out soon enough when they, like, you know, nothing was working.